In case you didn't know, I'm a founder, Y Combinator founder specifically. I started a company at the end of 2021, trying to make it easier for creators to do live video collaborations. I've learned a lot since, now deep in dev tool world. The goal of this video isn't to talk about my journey as a founder, it's more to show you guys what value we got from Y Combinator and why I think it was, without question, entirely worth it. The first thing we need to talk about though, is what Y Combinator gets. If you apply to YC and get in, they're going to invest in your company, and when they do that, they take a percentage of your company. This is standard, this is how the industry works. They have two investments they make at that point though, and it can be a little confusing, so I wanted to break that down quickly. The way funding works when you join YC is two investments that total up to $500,000. The first investment is what YC had done for the last almost 10 years, where they give you $125,000 for 7% of your company. 2013, YC introduced the SAFE, which stands for Simple Agreement for Future Equity. Goal of the SAFE was to make it easier for founders to quickly raise money and have a simple agreement between the investors and the company, so you didn't have to spend all your time worrying about your cap table, dealing with weird bonds and securities all at different points in your company history. Rather, this document clearly states when you raise a money round in the future, that is when valuation converts. You set a cap and whatever the company's value is, whatever the company's value. So let's say I raise a million dollars against a $10 million safe. What that means is, I don't have to diagram this. Yeah, I have to diagram this. God damn it. Why am I doing this? I'm supposed to be talking about software stuff. So let's say this is all the value in your company. And this is worth dollars unknown some amount of money we're not sure of. When a safe investment occurs, what is happening there is an investor is giving you a box and says, hey, here's some money. We'll paint this green because it's money. We're giving you this money. This is, let's say $100,000 against a $10 million safe. And we'll make it bigger numbers to make it slightly easier to work with. There's a million dollar investment and the safe is against $10 million. So in a case where your company is theoretically worth exactly $10 million, one against five, so it's slightly easier. So let's say this whole big thing is worth 5 million and the safe's for 1 mil. So they invest 1 million against a $5 million valuation cap. So this is how the investment worked. It's 1 million against 5 million. But the value of the company isn't known when they make that investment. Just because they put a $5 million cap doesn't mean there's a $5 million valuation for your company. It just means that is the valuation cap right now for this investment. So if your company ends up being worth, let's say it doesn't become 5 mil, it's only worth 2 mil. So make this way smaller. This investment amount didn't change though, and it's a cap. It's not an actual percent at this point. So because of this, if your company ends up being worth 2 million instead, they get half your company instead of only getting a fifth of your company. So in this case, the five mil val, they get, a, or this is what they agreed to as the cap. So if you hit that or you go way bigger, and that's the important thing, is if you end up being worth a hundred mil, you could be worth a hundred mil. But since they bought in at this five mil cap, they are buying in as though it was worth five mil. So that's why the investors benefit. Because if you end up being worth way more, they get a really good deal. If you end up being worth less, they still get their exact monetary values worth of your company. This is how most investments work because it's much simpler for an investor to come in and say, okay, here's this much money. If you succeed, I get this percentage. If you don't succeed, I get theoretically all of my money back as long as it's worth more than the investment you took total. Generally, you write off these investments as though they're never going to become anything and the company's going to fail and you won't see a cent back. But generally, when you raise a million and gets a $5 million or whatever, the goal is to see that company become way more valuable. Because at that point, if this $5 million company becomes a $500 million company, this million becomes $100 million. That's why companies invest this way. So let's take a look at the Y Combinator safe deal. Because this this is specifically the Y Combinator deal for uh, the 125K Combinator standard deal. Quick notes on the standard deal. It is non-negotiable. You take this deal if you join YC, you cannot negotiate on it. There are some slight adjustments if you've already exited a successful YC company, but generally this deal is not negotiable. So you get 125K for 7%. And the 7% is against a safe, which means we would do, got a bad at math. So that'd be 1.785 mil is roughly what the deal would be, is like your cap. So your cap for the company is 1.785 and this 125K is 7%. When you join Y Combinator, this is the deal. If you end up being worth way more, like hundreds of millions, they still get their 7%. If you end up not being worth this much, they don't get their percent or they get a much bigger percent. But as long as you make more money than this and your company is worth more money than this, they only get seven for this part of the deal. There is a second part of the deal though. And this is where things get a little more confusing. I'll label these part one. So the first part of the deal, you get 125K for 7%. Second part, this is the new part. They recognized that companies needed a bit more money nowadays and they also had a lot more money from the success of Y Combinator companies. So they give you another 375K right now on MFN terms. MFN stands for most favored nation. What this means is whatever the best deal is that you give to somebody else going forward is what this converts on. So if the next time I raise money, I raise at a $20 million valuation, this converts at that rate. If the next time I raise money, I raise at a $100 million valuation and I never raise lower than that, it converts at this rate. But if I give a family member a good deal and I let them invest at like a $2 million cap, then this converts at that and I lose a ton of my company. The reason they did this 
this is twofold. On one hand, it's to encourage people not having to raise money as desperately and as soon when they finish their time in Y Combinator because they have way more money in their bank. More importantly, it's to discourage you from taking deals that are not high enough value for your company if you can hold out and get a better deal that keeps you from diluting as hard. It encourages you kind of with like a guillotine hanging over you, but in a really empowering way, as weird as that is to say, where it makes me really considerate of what deal I take because I have first off the money to give me the freedom to delay taking a deal longer. But more importantly, I have the knowledge that if I take a bad deal, I'm taking two bad deals because one bad deal is also converting this into a bad deal. And that is the combination that makes the new Y Combinator standard deal so strong is you get the 7% here and they get their guaranteed ownership. Plus you get a ton more money and however successful you are raising is what determines what this converts at. So if you're able to hold off your next raise until you're worth 100 million, this becomes a very small percentage, like 0.3%. But if you immediately raise at the end of YC at a $10 million valuation, this becomes 3%. So this is how I think it's important to think about these things. I've only recently gotten this aware of how the investment stuff works, but man, it's worth it because the amount of help they give you through all of this, even just teaching you how these things work is super valuable. The network they give you is incredible. The connections, the just being surrounded by other founders going through the same thing as you is surreal. And I don't know if I would have survived this journey without the help of YC. So for me, it was worth it to get this money early and to get the assistance from the YC team to make our company set up for success. I hope this helps clarify that why I feel like the value is worth it. And more importantly, how they actually get their money from it, because this confusion should not be the reason you don't join YC. Do it because you have a thing you really want to build. Go build it.